Defend yourself against DDoS attacks by hiding your true IP address with ExpressVPN. And visit my custom link expressvpn.com slash gillymaster in the description to find out how you can get an extra 3 months free. Let's face it, the Pumpkin Scavenger Hunt is a pain to complete. If you've seen my last video on this topic, you'll know exactly why that is. I myself had to complete it twice, collecting 400 pumpkins for it to even count. So in this video, I want to teach you guys some neat tips and tricks so that when you go and track down all 200 of these pumpkins, should you decide to do that, you can do it as fast and as painless as possible. Starting off with the method of tracking down the pumpkins, when it comes down to it, there are two separate ways you can track down each one. First way is by just following a video guide, and the second way is by using a map. I'm just going to point this out straight away. Using a map is going to be a lot faster on average for you than following a video guide. That being said, using a map is really only a lot more efficient if you are using a computer that has multiple monitors. Maybe you have a setup with one monitor displaying the game and the other one with a map open. Or if you have a laptop that you can have around with you with the map open while playing, it's going to make it a lot easier for you. You still can use the map on a smartphone. It's just going to be more of a hassle that way. So you might be better off following a guide on a phone if that's the case. I will have a couple links to some great video guides in the description for the pumpkins, and the map we're going to be using can be found at the website gtaweb.eu, which I'll also have linked down in the description. This is your best map by far for pretty much every collectible in GTA Online. Now when you first load up this map, it's going to look like a mess of icons and circles, just so much clutter. So what you want to do is go over to the top left and select hide all markers. Then just below that you want to click jack-o'-lanterns, and now you have a nice map of all the jack-o'-lantern locations. But we're not done yet because now we're going to make the map look like more of what you'd see when you pause the game to look at your own map. And to do that, on the right hand side of your screen, you're going to switch to Game from Satellite. And after that's done, you now have essentially an in-game map of every pumpkin collectible location. Seeing all 200 on the map at once like this can be kind of overwhelming, so you want to tackle it by different subsections of the map. For example, the Murrieta Heights area, you can zoom in on that one area so you can really focus on the ones in that spot and pinpoint them more accurately. Then once you're done with that, you can go to Grove Street, zoom in on that area, grab all the pumpkins, and move on to the next one, and so on and so forth. And what's super nice about this map is that once you collect a pumpkin, you can right-click it on the map and it will fade out to help you track which ones you've already grabbed and which ones you haven't grabbed yet because Rockstar doesn't let us do that. And if you click a specific one, you can actually see a picture of exactly where it's at in the game if you're having a hard time finding it just off the map. The reason this is much easier and seamless on a computer is because on a phone you have to tap the pumpkin and then tap the show slash hide button to get the same effect as just right clicking on PC, which would equate to 400 inputs from you along the journey of collecting all 200 instead of just 200 inputs on a computer. Another strategy that you can use is you can look at your map compared to the website map, and then you can place markers down on your in-game map at each spawn point in a specific area up to a max of 10. Some of you might find this helpful, however, when I did this during my first run, I believe this is one of the main reasons that I made a mistake along the way, because instead of just crossing it off on the website map every time, I now had to get rid of the marker in-game as well. So I think it's better just to do it one at a time instead of using the markers. Just speaking from my own experience, you don't have to do that though. If you feel that markers would make it easier, go ahead and do it. So those are some tips and tricks in terms of triangulation of the jack-o'-lanterns. Obviously, if you're following a video guide, just do exactly as they do and you'll be perfectly fine. But if you're like me and like to look for strats to speedrun this, well, the map is going to be better at that because not only can you see multiple locations at once, but you won't have to try to scroll through the video to find the next location after collecting a pumpkin. It just kind of gets annoying doing that. In terms of traversal, the only vehicle you want to be using here is the Oppressor Mark II. You could also get by with the Mark I Oppressor, but landing it is going to be more annoying at times. It's not worth it to use a helicopter or any other aircraft because you need something that you can hop on, take off, land, hop off, and repeat, all in very quick succession. Helicopters take forever to start up, planes take more effort to land than it's worth, so the Oppressor is obviously going to be the choice here. And it's going to save you lots of time off your run doing it this way. You will come across some obstacles while collecting these. The two main ones that are going to slow you down are the explosion and the peyote plant. Now I've seen lots of people complain about the explosion blowing up their bike and the peyote plants teleporting them all the way to the hospital. Well I'm about to show you ways to negate both of those at least somewhat. For the explosion, number one tip is do not park the vehicle you're using close to the jack-o'-lantern so your vehicle does not blow up if you do get the explosion. Second thing, if you see the explosion trick show up, quickly open the interaction menu and enter passive mode. This will prevent the explosion from killing you. It will still launch you into the air a bit, but you're going to survive. If you're using the Oppressor Mark II, you'll only be able to do this every 5 minutes, so unless you have some bad luck and get it multiple times in a row, this will save you from death. I don't think you can take the weapons entirely off the Mark II to allow passive mode usage on it, so it doesn't kick you out of passive mode. I could be wrong though, but if there is a way to go into passive mode permanently on the Oppressor Mark II, this could then work perfectly. You wouldn't ever have to worry about dying from the explosions. For the peyote plant, instead of backing out the normal way and putting yourself at the hospital to then have to fly all the way back to where you were, 
Just open the pause menu and start up any job. Doesn't matter which one it is. The quickest one is just to start up Arena War Bomb Ball here. It requires the least amount of menu navigation. And then when you're in there, just back out. And instead of spawning at the hospital, you'll spawn at the place you were just at in human form. It's much faster than going to the hospital and back. One note about this though, your first death after the peyote will put you at the hospital no matter what, it's just bugged out that way or something. So if you take any form of damage via the shock or the atomize effect that you get, just make sure you snack back up to full health. And you should never really run out of snacks because one of the treats is also snacks. But yeah, those are my main tips to help you out on the lovely tedious journey of collecting all 200 pumpkins for the reward. It also helps out to put on like a podcast or some music while doing this to make it not completely boring, but that's up to your own preference for that one. If you complete the 200 and you don't get a shirt, despite you truly believing that you didn't make a mistake along the way, just contact Rockstar Support and tell them about it. My friend Go Burns had this happen to him. He went around, thought he had 200, and wasn't given the shirt afterwards, so he contacted Rockstar Support, and they hooked him up. You can see in the screenshot he posted, he told them about the troubles he had with it not giving to him, and they replied saying, After reviewing your account, we have added the pumpkin t-shirt. You should see the changes next time you log in, to which he confirmed that he did get it after that. So don't go and do it again, just contact them, which is probably what I should have done instead of do the entire thing over again, but then I wouldn't have gotten as much experience as I did for this video. Anyways, that is going to wrap it up for this little guide to the jack o lantern hunt. If you enjoyed or found it helpful, feel free to leave a like as well as subscribe to my channel for more GTA Online content. I want to give a huge shout out to all my channel members for your support. If you'd like to become a member for some exclusive perks, you can either use the join button or the link that's down in the description. And as always, thanks for watching and have a great day.